information amount is measured by the unit of bits. Let's illustrate by an example. The integer 15 is 00001111 in binary or base 2 because it is equal to the sum of these eight quantities 0 times 128, 0 times 64, 0 times 32, etc. to 1 times 1. Therefore, we need 8 bits to convey or represent any integer a that is between 0 and 255. Each bit is for one of these red binary digits. If we do not know what a is, and if a is equally likely to be any of the 256 possible integers, then the probability for it to be each integer value is 1 out of 256. If we take log 2 of this probability and take its negative, the result is equal to 8, and we say it is 8 bits. If we know that A is equal to 10, then the probability for A equal to 10 is 1, and the probability for A to be any other integer value is 0. The negative log 2 of the probability for A equal to 10 is 0. In general, given a probability distribution PA over the allowed values of A, the amount of information needed to get the exact value of A follows this formula. It is a weighted sum of the negative log 2 of the probabilities. So, in the example, when A can be any of the 256 integers equally likely, we get this information amount as this summation. We get 8 bits as the result. In the next example, we get 0 bits as the result. This makes intuitive sense. In the first case, we started with no knowledge of A, and it requires 8 bits of information, 8 binary digits, to let us know what A is. In the second case, we have full knowledge of what A is. It is equal to 10. So we need no more bits to know it more precisely. This formula for the amount of information needed to know A applies only to the case when A takes discrete values. In such a case, this amount of information is equal to the entropy of A, and this entropy is denoted as HA. Entropy is a measure of the uncertainty about a variable. It is the amount of information missing before one knows the exact value of this variable. Minus log 2 of this probability is also called the surprise about A. Let's illustrate by an example the entropy of the outcomes from the toss of a coin. When you toss a coin, the outcome has two possibilities, head or tail. In this plot, the horizontal axis marks the probability that the outcome is head. So when this probability is 0.5, then the head and tail are equally likely outcomes. It's a fair coin. When this probability for head is 0.9, it's a biased coin since 90% of the time the outcome is head. The vertical axis marks the entropy for this coin. Let's first look at the biased coin. The negative log 2 of the probability for head is about 0 0.15 bits. 
So when you toss this coin, you get a head. It's no surprise to you that you can guess uh, that this is the most likely outcome is head. So this 0 0.15 bit is a small amount of uncertainty about this outcome of a head. The negative log 2 of the probability for tail is, however, much bigger, 3.32 bits. It's much more surprising that you get a tail outcome, as you do not expect it as likely. Since the low surprise outcome happens 90% of the time, and the high surprise outcome happens only 10% of the time, on average, you get 0 0.469 bits of surprise from this biased coin. On the other hand, for the fair coin, each outcome has a 50% chance. Its negative log 2 is 1 bit, so on average, the amount of surprise or uncertainty is also 1 bit. So we see that this fair coin has a higher entropy. We are most uncertain about the outcome for each coin toss. In general, entropy of a random variable A, or the amount of information needed to know its value, is higher when A is more evenly distributed across its allowed values. If A can take n possibilities, the highest amount of information missing is then log 2 of n bits. Therefore, we require, for example, 8 bits to know an integer between 0 and 255 for n equals to 256 possibilities for A. Let's digest by playing a yes-no game. I know an integer value a within 0 and 255. For example, a is equal to 35. But you do not know it. And you can ask me yes-no questions to try to get to its exact value. For example, you can ask, is this number larger than 300? I would answer no. If you ask, is this number smaller than 250? The answer is yes. Or you can ask, is it an even number? The answer is no, etc. Your aim is to ask optimal, optimal yes-no questions so that you need as few questions as possible to get the exact answer. What is an optimal question? It's best when the yes and no answer will be equally likely. So each question gains you one bit of information. Since the integer has an entropy of no more than 8 bits, so you should not need to ask more than 8 questions to get to the true answer. But if you do not ask the questions optimally, then you would need more than 8 questions. For example, you could ask, is this number equal to 1? Is this number equal to 2, etc.? Then you may need 256 questions before you get the answer. You could also ask if this number is smaller than 10, and then ask if this number is smaller than 20. These two questions are redundant with each other, since the answer to one question partly or wholly covers the answer to the other question. So, here is an optimal set of eight questions. Each question gives you a binary digit below. So, for example, you can ask, is this number larger than 127? If the answer is yes, then B1 value is equal to 1. Otherwise, the value of B1 is 0. Similarly, you can ask the next question to get the value of B2, and so on. 